What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. I wanted to talk about in my last video, uh, the one of the Love Advice TV videos, they talked about smelling good. So I wanted to tell you about one of the colognes that I use and um, it's very dark. It's really the only way I can explain it. So it looks like this. Okay, it might be reversed, but I don't even know how to pronounce it, but it says uh, man in black, whatever. I picked this up at, uh, in, in Canada, we have like a Hudson's Bay. It's, it used to be called the Bay or it's called the whatever. That's where I picked it up. But you can probably look it up online and find it. There's like, uh, I think maybe three kinds. This is the one that's most expensive. It lasts the longest on your clothes and on your skin. Uh, so anyway, uh, it smells great. Fantastic. I do the back of the neck. I do uh, down here, like on my like thighs. kind of, And uh, obviously like one right here. So when I get hot, when I give hugs to my lady, uh, she can smell that. But if people are, if you're walking by somebody or whatever, it's in the back, they can smell it. If they're walking behind you, right? Shit like that. Anywho, let's get to the next video. Let's go. So I know I've been covering Love Advice TV for the last couple of videos. Um, so what I've been doing going forward is I pick like a day for which channel I want to do. And then I do a few videos on each kind of like coach or whatever. And then I'm going to obviously do, oops, sorry about that. I'm going to do my own uh, up behind me right here is like, that's the door right here up behind me. Here is the, uh, where I film my, my original content with, with like not covering a reaction. It's just my original shit. So, um, it'll be mixed in with that. So, uh, I'm covering, well, I think one more after this, and then I'm probably going to switch over to another coach or whatever. So anyway, without further ado, how to make an ex think about you. This is something that I hear all the time between. And one thing I do want to tell you guys, I, sorry, I know I cut it off, but the way YouTube works is a certain thing. So you're going to see a lot of people have com, uh, titles like this. I'm probably going to put the, almost this exact same title because it worked in the past, right? So YouTube works in a specific way. And I want you guys to actually look it up so you guys understand it. It's not, I know, I know you guys, not all the, none of you guys want to be YouTubers, right? It's fine. But I want you guys to understand why we do this because you're going to be like, oh man, like why, why did, why do you guys title shit like this? First of all, it works. <laughs> if you don't click on the video, right? If it doesn't entice you, if our thumbnails aren't good, you don't click. So we, me, what I like to personally do is make sure that whatever I'm delivering is is better than the title that you clicked on for. So if you guys are wondering that YouTube works a specific way, it has audiences already and we just put our videos in there. Okay. TikTok, Instagram and shit like that don't really work the same way. They are quick, like kind of like flash in the pan. YouTube is a long, like baking in the oven kind of thing. So, um, that's sort of how it works. So anyway, if you guys, uh, are wondering that there you go. Coaching sessions and our online content, people are always asking, how do I make them think about me? And so if you are also asking this question, you are in the right place. I'm so glad that you were able to tune in. For those of you who have no idea who I am, let me start first by saying, hi, <laughs> my name is Coach Natalie. This is Love Advice TV. Um, I've been on this channel. We created this channel many, many years ago. I recently heard a client tell me, oh, well, I saw a video you made in 2017. And I thought to myself, wow, we've been doing this for a long time. But Yeah, I started in 2018 kind of nuts and um i don't have nearly the amount of subscribers they do but uh fuck man like it's kind of crazy how fast uh things can 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 change so um work on yourselves work on yourselves but this this channel from the start has really just been a way for us to share tips and tricks and thoughts and suggestions to help you navigate through relationship troubles if you are in a relationship if you are in a breakup, if you are trying to rebuild post breakup to re-enter a relationship, any of these spaces are ones that we sort of focus on, on this channel and our sister channel, Happily Committed. Happily Committed more so focuses on those who are actively in relationships. Love Advice TV sort of crosses a few, a few fields, but really focuses on if you are dealing with a breakup and what your next steps are. And I have a lot of clients who wanna know, how do I make my ex think about me? And some of them ask that because they just want their ex to think about them. Some of them ask that because they wanna revive their relationship long term. Some of them ask that because they're insecure and they are frustrated with the situation and they just want their exes to remind them that they matter. So whatever the intention is, there, there are so many people asking, how do I get my ex to think about me? And so, so a few videos ago, I did an Aaron Dowdy cover, uh, a reaction, sorry. 
and uh, he talks about letting letting them miss you. So if you guys are interested in that, I'll try to remember to put a card up for you so you guys can watch that video. So I think to answer the question appropriately, let's first think about what makes you think about something. When you think about something, what are the characteristics, sort of what's like the environment that fosters that type of thing? The first thing that comes up for me is I think about things that aren't in my face, right? When I'm thinking about something, I'm often thinking about something or someone who isn't present. Um, and that's such a critical feature for me, right? You might say, oh, Nat, that is totally wrong, but I often think about things that I don't have in front of me. When I have them in front of me, my thoughts are typically geared towards something else that isn't in front of me. And so I think the same applies to relationships and to breakup territory. Giving your partner time and space to not have you in front of them actually provokes them to think about you more. And I think that's something that most clients really don't like. <laughs> and I say this in coaching sessions all the time, right? They don't, they wanna skip the space part. People are like, how do I bypass the space part? You can't, motherfucker, you can't. Everyone wants to get to the end goal without doing the work, right? Everybody wants to be absolutely ripped and jacked without going to the gym, without eating properly. And guys, you have to go through the work. If that person no longer finds you emotionally attractive enough to stay with you, okay, that means they're no longer attracted. They don't want to be around you. So you have to do the work on yourself. The one thing that you can control in this situation is that, is working on yourself. There's a book that you guys will be able to pick up. You just literally Google this or uh, put this on in on Amazon. It's the Daily Stoic. And like, I think on like page 43 or something like that, it is going to tell you like, what is it that you can control? Okay. Something like that. Well, we, what we control, uh, what we control and what we uh, don't. It's on page 17. Sorry. So you guys can literally pick up this book and learn about um, like the idea and philosophy of stoicism. So the, the point is there after a breakup, there's going to be a distance that your ex is going to want to, you know, invoke. And I'm just telling you from observation, chasing and pursuing will never fucking work to bring them back. So your focus isn't even, shouldn't even to bring them back. Your focus should be your improvement. But I know what people think during a breakup because I've been through many. And, um, and the, the only thing you're focused on energetically is them getting them back to you. How do I get them back to me? I miss them so much, et cetera. I want them to make me feel better, um, without they and they do this unhealthily, right? Or we think that they are going to be the one thing that's going to make us feel better. So the one thing that you can control is your actions and what you improve on. So on this, on the right, Again, if you guys have been watching my past videos, you know, skip ahead to where she's moving because that's when I'm done talking about this. But fear, grief, apathy, guilt, shame. Again, pick up the Sedona Method. Pick up Letting Go by David Hawkins because you're going to start understanding these emotions, okay? You're going to start understanding, you know, like where you are uh, emotionally and you have to be willing to go upwards, right? Think about, okay, in order for you to be attractive, this is where you need to be up in these two colors, and even green, green is, 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 is better. But being down here, when you're fearful, when you're grieving, when you're apathetic, like in a depressive state, guilt, shame, you're gonna be, you know, just out of pocket. You're gonna say things that you don't really actually mean to say. You're gonna, you know, wh what happens as you climb this is you start going from I feel, I am emotions to I'm observing these emotions that I feel and I am not my emotions. This is a big revelation that I have from studying ph Stoic philosophies, from studying David Hawkins, from studying emotions and why people act the way that they do. Why do people act silly, right? So studying people made me, made me go through this revelation and it applies to breakups so much more than you guys might even think. So most of you are down here and this is where this exact video title is coming from, a fearful uh, grieving, anger, or angry state. How do I, one thing guaranteed to make your ex think about you. That's what they titled this, right? That's probably what the title will be on my channel too. And that is a forceful, manipulative thing to be thinking. But when you're in the power section, this is when that automatically will happen because you're focused on other things. You're focused on your mission and your purpose and your goals. And this is when you become the most attractive version of yourself. It's simply that, guys. And look, I know it's not easy to go, to climb up here because you have to process these emotions. You have to go through the shit. See, 
when you have a fear of some kind in life, right? How do you get over that fear? You face it head on, right? If you want to get past it, okay, you have to face it head on and understand that you're in control of how you feel in that fearful state. And you're going to realize it has no control over you. You control it. So see where it goes. Uh, control. Okay. So a lot of people will get up to this angry phase pretty quickly, actually. They'll, they'll have these going on inside them, but you're going to get to this anger phase. That means that, you know, this is kind of where the real changes sort of begin when you get angry about things in life. So you're going to be like, oh man, you know what? I'm out of shape. I'm fat. I feel like crap, uh, blah, blah, blah. I started being like, so I started acting like such a bitch during our breakup. This will make you angry, which will get you to be active and, 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 and hustle. And it'll make you determined to change for the better. But what happens down the road is this will fizzle out eventually. You can't stay here. This is where discipline comes in. So I want you guys to be working out every day while you're here because you're going to create fantastic habits while you're here. So then when you get up into the neutrality part, you're still going to act, you're still going to go to the gym. You're still going to act uh, smart when it comes to your education about women, about relationships and about this. As soon as you start learning about this shit, bro, it is, it is a game changer. So anyway, let's continue. And year after year, from 2017 or before to now, the space has been the most critical factor in reconciliation for me. And space is just that powerful. And maybe that's why we don't like it. Maybe we don't like it because it is so powerful. And when we experience the power, we retreat and we say, nope, and we bail on space. But Mm -hmm. if the goal is to have your partner or former partner think about you, being out of sight is so important so that they can actually think about you. That's good advice. I know these guys push the whole idea of clean slate letters, but that's good advice. You know, I would even say the same goes for social media. I have a lot of clients who are going through breakups and they become compulsive posters on Snapchat and Instagram and any other medium that is sort of, you know, popular right now. And as a byproduct, their partner keeps tabs on them all day, every day and sort of knows where they are. And I often tell clients, well, if your partner knows where where you are, why would they text you? Right. And ask you how you're doing. They already know. They just went to your Snapchat. You post Zero mystery. 30 things today. So I would say the same applies online, right? Don't start over posting because you're in a breakup. Don't start over posting because you're going through something. Because by over posting, you're over communicating. You are still very much available to them. And so you reduce the likelihood that they're going to think about you. And I think the last thing I can add, and, and for what it's worth, there's so, there are a lot of videos on this channel that pertain toward longing, missing, you know, ways to spark thoughts of you. So I highly invite you to peruse all of those videos. We've got so many of them, thankfully, at this point in the channel's lifeline. But a final thing I also want to add is people are turned on by and interested in people who are out living their lives. And so something that we talk about in this channel often and in coaching sessions often is the value of personal development and the positive impact personal development has on reconciliation efforts. If you want your partner to think about you, you also want your partner to think about the fact that you're doing things, things that maybe they would also want to do. People want to spend time with people who are doing cool things because they want to do cool things too. So I think that that's such an added value. That's such an important feature to consider when you're thinking about how do I get them to think about me? Um, and, and also, what are they thinking about when they think about me? Do you want them to think about the fact that, you know, you're not doing well? Or that you're still compulsively thinking about them? Or do you want them to think, wow, she's, she's, she's up and she's out and she's living her life. Well, he's up or they're up and they're out and they're living their lives. And I think there is such a correlation between your personal development and living your life and them thinking about you and them reaching out to you thereafter. So I hope that this video has been sort of, you know, thought provoking and inspires you to say, okay, well, the most effective way to get someone to think about me is by not being available to them. The same applies to online. And since I'm not available to them, I am more available to myself. And what am I going to do with that availability? I'm going to grow. I'm going to write a clean slate letter. I'm going to go do great things. I'm going to make good choices. I'm going to enhance who I am and the quality of my life. That is just the sexiest thing you can do. It is something I hear prove to be successful from so many clients in situations like this, where they want their partner to miss them, where they're in a breakup and they're having a difficult time. So I hope that all of that is inspiring and helpful for you. If you have questions, if this doesn't make any sense, if you are... It makes sense. So basically, guys, you have to... (laughs) it's, It's what I was just talking about. Focus right here, OK? 
Okay. Now this is the emotional side of all this stuff. So write down, you know, it can be a piece of paper or whatever, write down what you should. I think personally, you guys, especially the men, you guys should fucking be slamming the gym every day. Sometimes twice a day. I don't give a fuck. Be in the gym a lot. You're going to create a fantastic habit doing that. It's going to make you look good. It's going to make you feel good. Even though you're going to be feeling down here most of the time during the breakup, there will be a point where you stop feeling like this as often and as intensely. See, a lot of people don't talk about that, but the intensity of the emotions is going to come down. It will eventually. You just have to just use this energy and the time that you have right now to make an impact, to make a dent, to make a change, to focus. Okay. That is what this is for. So if you guys want to download this, you just have to look up Hawkins scale of content or levels of vibration on, um, on, um, and Google and download this. I'll probably put this. So I have a discord for my red pill channel. I'll probably put this there. Um, I should set up a discord for masculine energy, but I don't a bunch of, I've done a group before and what I, what I might do is I might make it so you guys can't talk amongst each other because holy shit, it, a bunch of brokenhearted people end up fighting with each other. It's nuts. It, it, it's, it's an awful thing. Um, but I'll probably put it in the red pill channel. But anyway, you guys can down, you can, you can find this on Google and download it. There's plenty of uh, different ones. I'll see you guys in the next video. Coaching is in the description box down below.